Hello guys, in this video I'm gonna show you why you shouldn't write everything on the front end and why you should make the front end look a little bit complex. So I'm going to 10 fast fingers. So this is a platform that you can measure your typing speed as you can see. And let's just hit inspect. So okay. So when I hit it inspect, as you can see, we see some stuff, right? We see some code. So if you are wondering what this is, this is called as the front end. <clears throat> so when you are developing a web application, you have a front end and the back end. The front end is the the code that will run on the user's computer, as you can see in here. The back end, the back end is a code that will run on the server. And these front end and back end are always communicating. So in front end you write a code that will send something to back end. In back end you write another code that will some send something to the front. End. And there is a problem. As you can see, users can actually play with the front end. So in here I can actually change these values. And in this video, I'm gonna do that. So let's see. Let I click here. Okay. This basically allows me to select an HTML element. So I select this input box. And in here, as you can see, when I click this, I don't. I think when you translate it to the English, it should say like event listeners and in here as you can see we you can see all the events in here i click the key up event and click this file so this file just transformed me to the javascript so this is the javascript that is running on the front end as you can see it's a little bit complex it is 450 lines of code. So, what I'm gonna do is to add some time to my typing test. So, normally the typing text is one minute, right? As you can see in here. But I'm gonna make it more than one minute. So, in order to do that, you should first understand this front end code. And when I look at the parts where we are calculating the time, I see this countdown, right? So I know that we are gonna change, we are gonna play with this countdown variable. And this is actually a mistake. So they're calculating the time of the test in the front end, in here. If countdown is more than nine, display this. Else if the countdown is more than zero, display this. Else, so this basically means that your test is ended. Do this stuff like variable send data. We have data in here and so on. What they should have done is that when the user starts a test, they should send the starting time to the backend. And in the backend, they should have actually have a chronometer that will run for one minute and then they should send a message when the test ends from backend to the front end. So let's see how we play with this variables in the front end now. So I'm gonna change this zero to minus 60. Why? Because I explained if countdown is more than 9, we do this stuff. Else, if the countdown is more than minus 60, we do this stuff. Else, which means the test has ended, right? I know that the test ends when we enter this else statement. So, what I do is that make it, make the code enter this else statement a little bit 
late by changing this countdown to minus 60. And then in here, <coughs> as you can see, we have a get current time function, right? So when you look at the code a little bit in detail, you can see we get the start time by this get current time function. We get the end time by this get current time function. So they actually took a precaution to that. So what I mean is, if the user changes the text time to be 120 seconds, the test would evaluate it out of 120 seconds because they sent the start time and the end time to the backend. So we should also change this too. Uh, in order to change that, this end time, we first need to find where are get current time functions. And as you can see, they wrote a get current time function. They have a date class and then they d dot get time. They use this function. So I know that this oops, this d dot get time returns milliseconds. Right? Or maybe it might be even smaller than that, but whatever. So what I'm gonna do is to to subtract sixty hundred from my end time. And in this way, I am actually tricking this code into thinking that we have the 60 time test while having 120 seconds. So I just changed two different variables, two different places. I increased the test time by 60 seconds in here. And in here, I subtracted 60 seconds from the end time. And in this way, we successfully just hack this thing. Or in other words, we successfully changed the code in our favor. Yeah, it should work. So when I start the test, I should have 120 seconds. So I'm planning on writing a little bit slower in this time. And I will probably make this 2x and let me just start typing. Now, as you can see, it displayed 172 words per minute, even though I didn't write anything close to that. And we have accomplished this by just changing two different variables, two different places, and that's it. And another mistake of this of this person that coded this website is that they actually use clean variable names like countdown, like get current time, like send data. It's so readable. A user can just come and read this code. But let's see another typing platform which is monkey type. And when we try to inspect this and let's see, let's see by key up, uh, JavaScript file. See, they have different variable names like, like G, M, K. It's hard to read, like D, G, M, K, T. I mean, what are these? <laughs> so, therefore, you might actually want to make the front end code look a little bit unreadable, although it is not advised because most of the people would say you should make your code readable, but in the front end, I disagree. I mean, I think in front end, you should make your code unreadable. 
And that's basically all for this video. And have a great day.